hello howdy and welcome on back to the channel fish and freaks we're gonna give it the old evening dangle in this video but you know i was kind of rummaging through a lot of my tackle and i was going through the boat and i've been cleaning up the uh the garage my little you know fish cave slash wood area station and we have got a bunch of rods just got a bunch more here in the truck i'm taking out so carry these puppies into the garage and show y'all what's going on here lately in the garage, I've just been literally tripping over all these fishing rods. Now that is a lot of a lot of poles right there. So this is where I come in. I do uh, you know I do a lot of work on my fishing reels and outdoor equipment and whatever. I'm sitting here, I'm like you know digging around for something. And I got rods like about to poke me in the face, and I'm trying to come over here and get my tool off, and you know I'm just smoking these rods with my feet and then i'm like you know this used to be just a little corner where i could set a few of them now it's just crazy i need to get these things out of the way somehow and the reason i've got so many rods right now is because over the course of the last many months uh, me and the rest of the squad have been testing out you know these guys right here so we have been testing out a lot of blanks for the the power and the action and the grips and durability and all of that stuff and i'm super excited to be finally done with all the testing finally done with all the artwork and bring you guys the guggen squad rods that you've been waiting on for so long so the 31st of this month they go on pre-sale make sure to secure your dangle oh yeah so since i have so many fishing poles and i fish for not just bass i fish for other species as well I was like, man, I need a rod rack to help organize some things in here. So that's what I'm going to do before I go fishing today. And I was looking around at some rod racks, and I was like, man, you know those circular ones? Those are kind of cool, but hey, they're not going to hold as many as I need them to, and I just don't like the vertical situation. I'm pretty much filled up the vertical. And then I thought, there's a whole entire ceiling that I can use. So that is what we are going to do. We're going to build a ceiling rod rack. And ceiling rod racks are pretty neat because they can hold a ton of rods. And if you've got uh, a garage like me and it's already kind of full of a lot of stuff, you don't have room on the walls, it's the perfect scenario. I also have some scrap wood, so I don't even have to buy any materials or anything. We're just going to do this. Here's the math. Hope it works out. Usually doesn't with my woodwork, but we're going to see. I'm using three quarter inch uh, condensed board. This isn't actually um, plywood. This is a little expensive, but I just had it laying around. I would actually prefer plywood, but um, this stuff's really heavy, and it's gonna it's gonna work just fine. I just I have it laying around. It's in the way. We're knocking two birds out with one stone. Just working with the dimensions of the raw wood, three feet wide, and we're doing a uh, eight inch deep hole right here. We got some some little angles, some 45 degree angles in here, just to push rods. Uh, into the center and then I'm actually going to have some notches in here as well so I can separate categories it's probably going to be bait casters spinning and then I don't know you know crappie saltwater catfish I don't know we'll just we'll figure it out we're going to take the track saw just run straight across here make a nice clean cut and then we're going to take the jigsaw clean up this piece and this is going to act as our jig for the next one draw it out we're basically going to have two of those and then we're just going to put uh, some little blocks on the end to attach to the ceiling. Probably wood glue those up and do some pocket holes. Find some studs and wah bam, we've got a rod holder. Chip awards with this baby but it's gonna get the job done so now I'm gonna just trace out another one make it a double and then I'm gonna take the router round off the, the sharp edges we don't want that hitting our damaging the rods or hurting the line if I'm putting rods with reels up there and everything so we'll just make it a little soft and then honestly there's not too much more to go after that Hit 
hit it with a little sandpaper. Take off any other little hard edges. And both of these are routed. Nice round edges on it. Now, I think I'm gonna take one solid board and run it across here instead of just two. Well, that is not even straight. Wow, that's terrible. Anyway, I'm gonna take uh, just a board and run it all the way across there. That way, it'll be easier to find stud. I got a two inch board cut that's gonna go on the ceiling and I'm gonna install that first. Let me tell you something about the old pocket hole joiner here. Folks, if you do a lot of home projects and you don't have yourself one of these things, this one's made by Craig, but it's a pocket hole jig. Wow, makes your life just 1000% easier. It just makes these two holes right here. You put a screw in there and a lot of your furniture like that you get from Ikea or, or cabinets is done this way. It's just really strong and it's very easy. It's very easy to do. So since I'm in a bit of a rush trying to get to my dangle and I don't want to do any wood glue, this is how I'm doing it. Plus it's easier since I'm going to be drilling into the ceiling first and this would hang below it and I wouldn't have enough room to, to really screw up in there and install it. So just easy. Wah bam. Now we got to find our stud. Check it with the old stud finder. Just see if it's working right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's reading studs real well. Yep, I think that's gonna be the one with the juice. Yep. Got one there. Winning. Yeah, get it. Yes. There it is. Now this next one is going to be pretty easy because my garage door opener, it has to be sitting on a stud. If not, we have serious problems. Now we've got our base boards, I guess you could call them. It is time to attach our fancy dancy rod holders. Mm -hmm. Oh, that gum was splitter right there. Son of a biscuit. Oh man, I hear the whole thing splitting. That is not good. You ever just get to a point in a project where you're like, I think I've missed a major step. I don't know if this stuff is designed to hold pocket holes. Well, we'll see. Well, I think despite a technical error on my part, I think we're up and running now. So this one over here actually turned out good. I played it real safe. Used the actual drill. Set it on like level five so it wouldn't just blast through the wood but it looks decent. It's not cracked. The other one is definitely cracked. Okay, let's see if it can hold some rods. That's what we made it for. All right, come here, my little lovelies. Pull them in this way. And go up that way. A little bit of garage door interference. Big old mammer jammer poles here. 
sit. Oh my gosh, I should have made this thing bigger. Oh, this will be plenty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this project took me a couple of hours, but just look at all the rods we have gotten off the floor. Comments on the results? I gotta tell you, I like this style. Just the open, you know, I can see everything that's there. I didn't want to do like individual little rod slots because I got way too many. Put them up on the ceiling, they'll be fine. They were collecting dust on the ground, now they're gonna collect less dust up on the ceiling and they just provide a little ambiance. It's like the ultimate dangle chandelier. I like being able to sit down in here in my little wood shop slash outdoor cave. You know, I've got my bows hanging up back there. I've got fishing rods hanging up above my head. I've got, you know, Guggen squad, Guggen baits. I got my knives, I got my camping tools. If it was like 30 degrees cooler in here, it'd be the perfect doghouse area, you know? Getting get a little, little trouble, maybe said the wrong thing about the dinner. Didn't like that spice, got in trouble. Come down here, live your best life. But that is ultra extremely rare because OSG is always cooking up the goods. Just kind of look at uh, the stamps, the signature stamps up there. There's quite a few GSs, which is pretty cool. Go ahead and just tap on that like button for scrap wood creativity greatness, y'all. And you saw how I did it, so you can go make you one now. Saturday night and the ramp is packed. Yes, it is. It's to be expected. You know, if Emmy and Stephanie were in town, this would be a good night to take them out. We have a lot of neighbors that come out and enjoy the lake and just, I mean, everyone around town comes out here when it's in the summertime. It's just, it's just the summertime, ain't no na 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 kind of deal, you know what I'm saying? To be honest with y'all, I, I have no fishing expectations, patterns, ideas in mind. I don't even think I have a lure tied on. I'm gonna kind of wait for the boat traffic to die a little bit. Oh yeah, give it a rip there, bud. Give it a rip. Seeing a lot of ripping and not enough fishing. I got a boat coming right at me, so I gotta put this camera down and navigate. There you go, man. Big sea of front tangle. Son of a boat's sitting on the fishing spot I wanna go to. Not fishing boats, party boats. I got party boats sitting on my fishing pole. Better do a 180 and get it. Woo! Woo! Ride a mercury, ride him into the wind. Yeah! Okay. Back deck is a little wet from a big wakeboard boat wig. But we're gonna get this party started here. I have found a, like a deep hump. And I'm gonna throw a little spoon at this ledge right here. I think there are some big bass sitting on this ledge. And I think there's also some white bass that are just surrounding the entire area. So I'm, I'm hoping that the white bass will come up and school this evening and then I'm gonna lock up with one of these Mondo heads down here. This rod that I'm holding is probably going to be uh, one of our best selling rods just be given the length and the action. This is our, our seven foot uh, medium heavy, which is generally um, what most people see as a go-to type rod. It feels like sexual chocolate, I will say that. You guys just want to put it on like the most wake possible mode and just come right through my fishing hole. That, that's tremendous. Thank you so much. I, I want to say there's even a school of crappie on this ledge. Like it's, there's a lot going on out here. Give me that jet ski. That's what I need. Oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. Definitely hook, hooked up on something right there. It wasn't small. It was either bottom or it was a big fish. It wasn't no, wasn't no tip tip. It was full connection. There we go, there we go. That's gotta be a bass. Yep, coming up to jump. These are bass down there. There we go. No, it's a giant crappie. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Holy shnikes, I thought I saw a school of crappie there. Oh my god, what a dandy. <laughs> what a hammer. Oh, buddy. Since OSG is not in town and I am in bachelor mode cooking for myself, we're just going to have to keep you, sir. And we might just have to scoot on up here and get us another one of them Mondos. God, you want to talk about a hammer, dude. Hitting a full-grown spoon. Working it fast, and that was, that was the second one that hit it. That crappie right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a slap the sides off of it, put some butter in a little tin foil, and throw it on the grill. Oh yeah, that's a full meal. Boo, there's, oh God. That was a hard smack. This lady over here, you probably can't, you can't see, but she is very upset. And probably had a little too many white claws in her life today. Put a life jacket on that gal, my gosh. You know, no one cares that I'm fishing. Like, people out here give zero craps about me fishing in this spot. They're just like, I'm gonna come 20 feet away from you and just deliver a wake towards your boat. Maybe they're waiting on that night bite, I don't know. By the way guys, I did order a underwater light. So I'm waiting for that to come in and do a uh, nighttime underwater light crappie fishing video or just fishing in general, see what comes up to it. I've never done that before. I think it's the perfect time to do it. So subscribe right here to the channel if you want to stay tuned. Here we go. Just can't get bit. Ended up with this, I think it might be a 15 incher, quite honestly. It's a big old tail slapper. Sorry, you got y'all wet. Yeah, you do smell good. You smell real nice, I like you. Here we go, silver bullet landed. All right, girls, I know you got some eggs for me. It's just the duck that's outside. There's my girls all up on the bars. Let there be light. Penny and Peggy you can count on every day. I mean, they are almost a 365 day a year layer. But the other girls, you know, the Easter Eggers and the Door Kings, they're not. They're not so much. I think they're like a two, 250 to 280 in that range. So don't get them every day. God, the, oh, God. Just up my sandal sunburned. Oh, my goodness, it hurt. Mr. Crappie. He's going in here, in the Dometic. That's gonna be lunch tomorrow. Maybe a little grill, maybe a little sandwich, a little crappie sandwich in the afternoon, come on now. So thank y'all for tuning in today and checking out my uh, rod holder build. Unfortunately, I have a higher number of rods than what I caught in fish today, but you know, it's summer. Sometimes you get a tough dangle. Thank you guys as always for tuning in. Happy building, happy dangling. God bless you, I'll see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.